So, good morning. Good morning. How great it is to be here again, live, together with you. And also with you, virtual. How welcome and happy that you are also with us. And yesterday evening, we went to the Moulin Rouge. And that was really awesome. And when we were there and uh, listening to all those people and seeing the show and the entertainment, I thought, what a passion and what a vibe and what an energy. How cool would it be to have that in your organization, isn't it? Okay, let's see what we can bring in our organization. I bring you back when you were between four and 10 years old. What was your passion back then? What did you strive for? Did you play with Star Wars or did you, did you think I'm a prince or a princess? Did you play music like the little girl or boy on the presentation? When we were young, we were encouraged to do the things we like to do. When we were young, we had people around us who helped us when we fell down and said, okay, stand up again and do that over and over again. And then all of a sudden we go to school and we are in a system, a system of a teacher and a student in a hierarchy. And then we start working again in a system of a manager and of an employee. And the manager is telling you what to do and how to do. Are you still connected with your purpose and with your passion? How does it look like in your organization? Are people bored? Maybe they are overwhelmed and super busy, right? Are they exhausted? Or are they rather experiencing a drive? An energy. Are they empowered to collaborate? And are they encouraged to co-create and to design the future from the heart? And if the answer is no, then stop dissing the human spirit. Spark the X factor in your organization and bring the soul back again. With our talk today, we will take you on a journey of transforming and humanizing business. A journey that goes beyond the visible side of change, that is about leaders and people, that is about elevating behaviors and mindset. We will share with you our experience with helping organizations in their evolution through leveraging the power of collective intelligence and continuous reflection. Oh, sorry. My name is Alisa Hofmeister, and I want to introduce myself by my purpose. My purpose is gather a team, set up the expedition, climb the mountains and go beyond horizons. It's not about discovering new landscapes, but it's about seeing things in a different way. This purpose is about team, it's about trust, it's about focus on the things that really matter. It's about sharing stories that we do today and yesterday and hopefully also the next days. It helped me make different decisions. So after being part of large transformations, I started my own company, Twinkster. And with Twinkster, we help organizations like Erste and other companies to build a vibrant workplace in which people are able to create sustainable growth. And my name is Margarita. I'm People and Culture Transformation Lead of Erste Group Bank, which is one of the leading financial service providers in the eastern part of the European Union, based in Austria, Vienna. I'm very happy to be here today with you. My strong belief is that behind every successful organization, there are great people with a lot of courage and innovative mind. And therefore, my personal purpose as an agile HR and change professional is to create a healthy environment for our teams to collaborate and grow. I'm also founder of the Agile Hub at Erste Group, which is our largest internal community with a purpose to build and share knowledge about Agile across our 45,000 employees. The Agile Hub supports my belief in collective intelligence and in communities grown bottom up. 
While our financial industry has been massively disrupted, one thing hasn't changed, and that is banking is people. So everything we do, the people are our critical success factor. Erste Group was founded more than 200 years ago with a strong purpose to build prosperity to the people in our region. And today with our seven countries and more than 16 million customers, we're more than ever committed to do so, to bring financial prosperity to the people in our region and to support them. Therefore, with many of our teams, we embarked on a journey towards more agile and modern way of working so that we could collaborate better, so that we are closer to our customers and of course drive change for a better future. What changing is one thing. We, and maybe you saw the research of the Business Agility Institute, companies who are on the way to an agile transformation also face challenges. We also did, isn't it? One of the, the top five challenges is resistant to change, leadership, difficulty in scaling, silos, and having commitment. Absolutely, and um, I pick on leadership quite a lot <laughs> because we often underestimate the power of having an aligned leadership team, a team that stands together, a team that does not stand on the way, a team that do doesn't just manage change, but that can lead change, because this is what people need. They need a sparring partner. They need someone who will help them, empower them, let the change flow, rather than you know, asking, and when is it uh, gonna be done? You know? In my, one of my last experiences, I um, often heard from leadership, you know, we need to do this organizational change, but, uh, you know, we need to be very clear when are we done with that change and, uh, you know, when are we delivering the first tangible results. So what this pushed us to do is, of course, to sit down, make a PowerPoint and on that PowerPoint, uh, make a picture of our new operating model, which is supposed to deliver better business value. Right. And our leadership was very happy with that. Thank God, we very soon came to our common sense, which we often forget home when we go to work. But we took it that day with us and we said, okay, stop with the PowerPoint, stop with the operating model. We need to go a step back because it's not operating models that deliver value. It's people who deliver value. So we um, park this PowerPoint, yeah, we put it in the drawer, steps back, we started working with our leaders differently so that they can create a purpose that can drive the motivation of our people and their inspiration. So we started to work from the people journey circle. The elements which you see in here are not really rocket science, is it? But it is about the things that are behind it. And in the middle, you see the people and purpose. So that's where it all started. We do not talk about change because change is replacing things from one structure to another structure. But business agility goes beyond the structures, goes beyond the frameworks. It's about behavior. It's about mindset. It's about growth. And we started from the middle, from the people and the purpose. So where did you start? To where did we start together? I often read in change books, start with leadership. Let me challenge that. Start with your change team <laughs> because your leadership team will need someone to help them, you know, along the journey. So we started by investing time in preparing a transformation team, a team that has a good composition. So we looked at what are the capabilities we need. We also invested time that this change team becomes a team because by the way, they are a normal team. So they need time to form, you know, and go through all phases. And we also invested time in clarifying what is the role of the transformation team and what is the role of the leadership team and what are the expectations between them. This really helped us to kick off the journey in a good way. But transformation is not a goal in itself. We already heard that eh, the last uh, days. And the transformation team is also not the owner of the transformation. 
But what you can do as facilitators of change, of this whole transformation, help the leadership to create the common goals. But starting to work to the future, you first need to know where you are today. What is your reality? Where are you? What are the strengths, the weaknesses, the challenges, the opportunities? In order for us to find where we are right now, I will not surprise you probably, but we used a very simple technique called SWOT analysis. So <laughs> we invited our leaders to reflect what are our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And it worked amazing because it helped our leaders to realize, okay, we come from different business areas and environments, but we share similar problems. And by the way, our strengths combined create something powerful. So it helped us to create a common ground for a common future. And once you have that, you can imagine. Yuval Harara already said in his book, Sapiens, imagination is human's most unique trait. It brought us where we are today. It will bring us also to the future. So it's time to dream, to dream about our future. What are we aiming for? We invited our leaders to dream about the future with using a technique uh, by writing a LinkedIn post from the future. So we told them, guys, you are in the future. Imagine you're down to write a post to your network. What do you want to write to your network in 10 years from now? Well, how does it feel? What do you see? What are you proud of? What has changed? And this was also a very nice uh, technique that helped us to bring our leaders in the future, um, align them on a story that they want to tell to their networks. What are they proud of? What is the organization that they wanted to build? But building the purpose and building uh, your SWOT analysis and building that LinkedIn post, how are you going to engage with your people? Our ancestors really had some beautiful things that they did in their tribe to engage the people in their tribe. They had bonfires and they gathered together and they shared their stories, their knowledge, they transferred their knowledge because what can you eat, what can you not eat? So it was very clear that we need to create an aligned story uh, that leadership can use to ignite our people, to inspire them about the change journey we are on. And we used for that uh, the Pixar pitch. I don't know, um, look it up in, on the internet. It's a very nice structure which starts with once upon a time. And it tells the story about the journey. We asked our leaders, OK, tell how this once upon a time happens until finally we reach uh, the future. And having that story then allowed us to, to think about and what is the character that we want to play in that story? Are we the, the good one or you know, the, the funny one or the bad one? How do we look like as an organization in the future? How do we behave? How do we act? So we started building our organizational persona, someone with whom our people could relate and know and recognize for its actions. And this is all the invisible part. And now we come a bit in the visible area because it's all nice. But when we put something on the wall or explaining the story, mm -hmm. how are we going to execute? Mm -hmm. For us to um, visualize our purpose, to visualize where we want to go, to keep track on that once upon a time story that brought us to the future, we decided to, to use the Obeya approach. And yesterday in the morning, we, we saw the, the nice uh, video from iObeya about what Obeya is. For us, Obeya is really that large room, as we heard yesterday, that puts together all the relevant information that we need, our leaders need, our people need to prioritize, to make decisions, and to collaborate. So Obeya really helped us to keep track on what do we want to achieve and to work on the things that really matter, and not only to ask ourselves how successful are we in doing that. So we cannot do that on our own. Absolutely. You know how the saying goes, alone I go fast, but together we are faster. faster. No, <laughs> better we come further. <laughs> That's how the saying goes. Um, so with everything you do and with everything we did, 
in the organization, we used mm -hmm. the collective intelligence of the crowd. It was not a top-down approach, but we went from bottom up. Absolutely, and this is what I'm personally very proud of because um, we did all of these things that uh, I just mentioned uh, to you, the, the SWOT, the, the persona, the story. We also invited our people. We didn't do that only with the leadership team behind closed doors somewhere. Definitely not. We invited in series of design sessions our people to also reflect on the very same questions we asked our leaders. This helped our leaders tremendously because it helped them to be on the ground, to be well grounded on their ideas and to validate with our uh, people, are we really building a future that matters and makes a difference? So to summarize a little bit uh, how far we have come in our journey and what are the benefits that we realized so far. First of all, now we are in a situation where we understand and know our purpose and its value. We have a strong leadership team that goes together instead of asking, and when is this operating model going to be in place? By when exactly? And last but not least, we have people who carry the change with them because we co-create the journey together. So they are not sitting and waiting. When is this going to happen? Is it all perfect? Of course not. There are still many people in our organization who ask and, you know, when are we seeing some tangible stuff? Because none of these three points is very tangible. But believe me, these three points are the main foundation for successful change and transformation going forward. With these three points, we can walk with confidence and enthusiasm on the next steps. And we also explained, don't be hard on yourself and give yourself a break. Because our brains are not built for this era. Oh yes, we can change everything. We got also used to the smartphone, etc. But go back to the early days. When you start crawling, when you start walking, when you get up and down, there is a goat path that you created and that you walked and walked and walked till it became the highway, which you see on this picture. And now we are moving to a different way of working and a different way of thinking, a different way of leading. So we cannot reset ourselves. We are not computers, but we can create new goat paths. So give yourself a break, grow your mind and pave new paths. Our call to action to you all and to you all virtual, spark the X Factor, focus on leadership, Use the collective intelligence of the crowd. Connect people to purpose and show. And last from my side would be believe in your organization, believe in your people and believe in yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs>